What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the studio. Now for this past couple of weeks, my fried chicken sandwiches have been blowing up. People have been giving me a lot of compliments. So I thought I'd bring this recipe to you guys, my beautiful viewers, because you guys are awesome. All right. This recipe is going to be surprisingly easy and very good. All right. So the theme for today's recipe is going to be soaked, drenched and fried. Let's go. All right, first of all, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and let's see us bring this beautiful recipe to you. Hopefully you like it. Leave us a comment at the end and let us know if you try it or not. So we're getting into it. We're doing our soaking process, which is we have chicken thighs. Uh, you can use chicken breasts if you want or other parts of the chicken. It really doesn't matter. It's your preference. I like the breasts. I mean the thighs instead because, you know, dark meat. Uh, we're gonna start with two eggs cracked in your bowl. We're gonna give this a uh, nice little whisk around Next we're adding a little bit of Cajun spice about two to three tablespoons of Cajun spice into your eggs your whisk eggs About a cup a cup and a half of buttermilk Next, you're gonna give this a nice mix and then we can add our chicken into the mixture. Uh, after you add the chicken, basically you're just gonna cover it and let that sit for about an hour, 20 minutes to an hour. You get the best results, right? And then we're gonna get into our next step. Let's go. Obviously, you're gonna put this in the fridge while you let it sit, okay? All right, while your chicken's um, marinating, you're gonna start with the spread for your, your burger buns. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing a honey Dijon mustard uh, aioli. We're starting with a little bit of honey Dijon and we're gonna use, instead of mayonnaise, we're using Greek plain Greek yogurt. Just a little bit of healthier take on this fried chicken sandwich, all right? Let's go. Now, in terms of your measurement for this uh, spread, uh, aioli, I should call it, you're going to need about about a cup of plain Greek yogurt. You're going to need about two to three tablespoons of your Dijon mustard. Obviously, you can see I added a little bit more um, because I like the flavor. So you can go a little bit more, a little bit less, just adjust the flavor to your palate. All right. And now we're going to move on to our next step. And now we're getting into the sauce for our coleslaw. We're going to take some Greek yogurt, not mayonnaise. We're going to have, add some white wine vinegar to that. A little bit of red wine vinegar as well. Some brown sugar to go along with some sweetness. Now that all your ingredients are in the bowl and nicely mixed together, we're going to get our slaw in a bowl and get everything incorporated and mixed together so it can sit and let all these flavors come together nicely. Now let's talk about our slaw in general. Um, we have a little bit of shredded um, white cabbage, shredded red cabbage, and some um, carrot sticks. That's all you're going to need for this uh, slaw. So you're going to pour our sauce in and we're just going to mix everything together and also let that sit uh, off the side or in the fridge to let all those flavors kind of seep into your cabbage uh, and add a little bit of salt and pepper as well. Uh, a little bit of olive oil or sesame seed oil. All right. All right. Let's get into our drench for our fried chicken. Um, this is going to be just our dry ingredients right now. We are starting off with, uh, with about one and a half cup of uh, all-purpose flour. About half a cup to a cup of cornstarch. Two teaspoons of uh, baking powder. About a tablespoon of um, seasoning mix. I use Cajun for mine, so you can use whatever you feel comfortable with. And about two teaspoons of salt give that a nice mix and you're ready for, your drench is ready for your chicken now if you're doing a follow along just know that you're doing amazing and you're great so 
We're moving on to our next step, which is getting our chicken nice, fried up, and crispy. Now for this uh, process, we're using some peanut oil in our pot uh, at about medium high heat. Now you're gonna see that I use a thermometer to get my temperature up to about 3, 350, 360 for this process, all right? Just make sure there's no water in your pan when you're doing this process so you don't get any oil splashes on yourself. So be very careful with this process. All right, now that our heat has reached the desired temperature, let's get our chicken coated and fried up. All right, ladies and gents, this is the fun part of the cooking process. You get to fry up your lovely chicken. So first things first, you want to take uh, your chicken thighs out of this uh, buttermilk mixture and you want to just coat it on both sides in your flour mixture. Make sure you shake off the excess liquid from the buttermilk mixture. And then when you dip it and coat it into your flour before you put it into the oil, shake, uh, shake off as much of that flour um, excess as you can and then you're just gonna gently lower it down into your heat just be careful not to burn yourself now that your chicken look at these beautiful chicken thighs look at that color it's so beautiful but yeah for the process you basically want to cook it on one side for roughly uh, four to five minutes you know and then flip it and then cook it for another two to three minutes and by then you should have it should be cooked all the way through it all depends on the thickness of your chicken now you have a thermometer so use that to make sure your temperature inside goes above 175 fahrenheit anything above that you should be a-okay under that you need more cooking all right and you can always finish this in the oven as well if you need to and do it in batches not to overcrowd your pan because doing so will lower your temperature and you won't get an even cook on your fried chicken and it won't be as crispy so do it in small batches so you can have the perfect crisp on your chicken now once your chicken is um, nicely and cooked through you want to uh, take it out and just sit it on a cooling rack are a draining rack so you can drain off those excess uh, the excess oil that's there or you can put in some paper uh, on top of some paper towel as well It'll absorb uh, most of the oil coming out of that because you don't want to eat your fried chicken and have all that oil in your mouth so yeah let's go honestly take a look at these lovely beauties right here kfc would be jealous you know what they might even come contact me for this recipe but let's go all right, now that your chicken's um, sitting nicely and draining off the oil, the excess oil, we are gonna render some bacon on medium heat in a pan. We're just gonna crisp it, crisp it up a little bit for our our chicken sandwich. Because what's a chicken sandwich without a little bit of bacon, you know? But then if you don't really eat pork, on the sense, you can always omit this. It's not needed. It's just honestly just chef's preference you know just my preference to add it in right now at this time because i thought it would be delicious and it make for good content now once again once your bacon's nice and crispy to how you desire it how you like it you're just going to set that on some paper towel to for the excess oil again because as i said before you don't want all of that on your sandwich right all right we're coming up on building our sandwich uh first of all we're just gonna slice up a couple slices of swiss cheese and we're just gonna layer that on top of our chicken we're gonna pop that in the oven just to melt the cheese a little bit and then we're gonna get to assembling and toasting our buns for the sandwich Now that you got your chicken in the oven and your cheese is being melted, you want to get your brioche buns, uh, I mean brioche, why would you use any other buns for your sandwich, right? Uh, you want to slice those, make sure um, you give it a nice butter on both sides of your bread. And we're just going to toast that in a, in, a, in a pan, on, I would say medium to low heat, because you don't want to burn them. You just want to give it a nice uh, toast on the top of it in our pan on the stove and 
we can start to uh, assemble our beautiful chicken sandwich. Now this is exactly what you're looking for. Some nice toasted golden brown color on your, your buns. And after that, we're just gonna add all our spread, our filling, our chicken, our slaw. Ah, oh, I can't wait till you see this. I can't wait for you to try it yourself and I cannot wait for the comments. All right, now that we're ready to assemble our sandwiches, we're gonna start off with our honey Dijon aioli that we did with the Greek yogurt. You're just gonna spread that on each, each of your buns, top and bottom, and then we're gonna move on. Next, we're just gonna add our slaw to the bottom part of our bun. You can add it on the top, but I like it better on the bottom, so when I bite into it, it won't um, start going all over flying all over the place on you on the bun so i like to keep my slaw on the bottom so it has something to rest and sit on and i can have a better time eating it other than trying to keep all my fillings in my burger or my sandwich and immediately after that you're just going to add your chicken with your melted cheese on top of that lovely cabbage slaw that you have right here immediately followed by your crispy bacon oh so good and delicious but like i said before if you don't want your bacon you can omit the bacon it's not a problem and immediately right after your lovely bacon we're adding some butter bread pickles on top oh i'm excited if you never had butter bread pickles it's probably one of my, my favorite pickles in the world if you never tried it i i definitely recommend picking some up all right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. One of the best fried chicken burgers you're ever gonna taste. Um, that's my personal opinion anyways. Um, this should make KFC or I know any one of those fast food joints a little bit jealous out there. But that being said, I hope you guys get to try this. I hope you guys get to cook it, make it for your loved ones, your family, you know, make it for date night, whichever, whichever you prefer. Um, yeah, that's it. I appreciate you just gonna we're just gonna let the video play out with a little bit of plating right now and the salad we got here is just a, a nice um, kale Caesar salad, but you know We're playing around with recipes. So I hope you guys like it I hope you guys come back to see what we have next in store Please hit that like button that subscribe button Please leave us a comment and if you have any question for me or the team going forward you can hit us up in our social medias you can join our discord we're always having discussion we're always posting what we're doing next in the group so hit us up anytime and all our links for our social media our discord is down in the details on our page as well so if you have any questions and information that you want to pass on to us don't hesitate to do so and we appreciate you guys coming out and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.